Hey everyone, welcome to part four, and probably my last part specifically about the rule book itself. I'm going to do one more uh, review on each part of the Galaxy of War book and the Dark Millennium book. But, as always, my name is Jay, and I'm doing an in-depth review of the new 7th edition Warhammer 40k rule book. And so far, I've basically covered all the rules and the big stuff. Right now, in this part, I'm going to go over the special rules. Um... The special rules, and I'll go over the psychic powers, and a little bit about the terrain, and then that's basically the rule book, and that's it. It's a not a very big, thick rule book. It's an easy read. I've read it through a couple times already, and uh, it's pretty okay. It's okay. You know, I'm not I'm not upset about it. I don't know if this rule book necessarily uh, warrants a new edition. A couple interesting things: they made vehicles harder to kill, flying monster creatures harder to shoot down. Um, Psychic phase, that's pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, and unbound so that you can bring a lot of different things in the same that might break it pretty quickly. So you can bring a whole army of monster creatures and just have fun. But it'd be a fun game, to be fair. I just, uh, I don't know. I just think this is things getting a little silly. But it'll be okay. So let's go over. So I'm in the appendix now of the Warhammer 40k rulebook, and it goes through all the special powers, or sorry, all the special rules, and all the special rules, I only noticed a couple were different. Um, one of them was, um, it will not die. I could have sworn it was on a 4 plus, now it's on a 5 plus, it gains a wound back. Uh, one of them was split fire, automatically, doesn't need to, ro to roll leadership check, just automatically split fires, and that shot happens before the other, the rest of the squad. Um, what were the other ones? A couple interesting ones. Uh, Skyfire. A weapon with Skyfire can fire normal at anything flying, but has to snap fire at anything that's not flying. Uh, Smash can now re-roll on the pen table. You have to take the second result. That's pretty cool. And that's about it. There weren't many that were really different. They included the ones, obviously, from Escalation and from Stronghold Assault into here, but they kept pretty much the same. So that's about it. You know, the special rules, just to glance over, it's nothing really special. This codex, so not this codex, this rule book is very, very similar to if you just took the 6th edition and Escalation and Stronghold Assault and put them together. Very similar. Um, yes. That's about it. So, special rules. Next, we get melee weapons. Uh, melee weapons are the same. Unfortunately, they did not change. I was really kind of hoping that they would change force weapons to be AP2, because then the Grey Knights would just be awesome again. But they didn't. Force weapons are uh, AP3. Or at least the un... Sorry. Four swords are AP3, force axes are AP2, and then the unusual force weapons are also AP3. Um, that's about it. Nothing unbelievably... New or crazy about that. Grenades, still the same as always. Uh, next, it actually includes um, some of the terrain data sheets. Not all of them, but most of them. Like there's one for the Shrine of Aquila, Manufactorum, uh, Basilica Administratum, Sanctum Imperialis. For example, Sanctum Imperialis is uh, terrain type ruins. Ruins are difficult terrain. Models in ruins receive a 4 plus cover. And special rules, benevolent light. Models in the Sanctum Imperialis have the adamantium will and night vision special rules. Why not? I'm going to cover all three. Um, Shrine of the Aquila, special rules. They're also ruins. And the Eagle's Gaze is a special rule. If a unit from the armies of the Imperium has any of its models within the Shrine of Aquila, it rerolls failed morale checks. Any other model that is in, in a Shrine of Aquila has the hatred. Special rule. Manufacturer. Uh, special rule is Omnicize Gaze or Benediction. It's also a ruin. And models in a manufacturum that are firing weapons with the It Gets Hot special rule. Reroll failing uh, failed saving throws for wounds inflicted by the It Gets Hot special rule. It's not bad. Uh, Sanctum Imperialis, no, I already covered that one. Uh, Basilica Administratum, Eternal Progress to Victory, a unit that identifies a mysterious objective that is a 
in a Basilica Administratum can choose to reroll the dice if it wants. There's a Battlescape, Special Rules Deeper, sorry, Desperate Shelter, models in the, on the base of Battlescape model receive 5 plus cover save, regardless of whether or not they're 25% obscured. Crashed Imperial Aquila Lander, which I think I have that one. I should make a tutorial for that. For the Crashed Imperial Aquila Lander. Let's see if I have that. Maybe not. Uh, it's Mysterious Wreckage. You roll a d6 and see what happens. Uh, one is unusual, Unstable Fuel Core. Uh, the unit that is entered or deployed in base contact with the Crashed Imperial Lander immediately suffers d6, strength 5, AP minus hits, ignores cover special rule. 2 4, nothing of note. 5 6, immediately place an objective marker within 3 inches of any part of the a piece of terrain. Whichever side controls the objective marker at the end of the game scores one additional victory point. Cool. Uh, Twisted Corpse, Dense Thicket. This is a special rules model on the base of the Citadel Wood model. Receive 5 plus cover. Moonscape. Uh, game plus 2 to the cover save if you're on top of it. That's it. And now we're going to get to my favorite part, the new psychic powers. Um, as with before, there are the, fi the fundamental uh, groups of psychic powers, and if you buy the cards, which I did, because I like to spend money unnecessarily, uh, it says on the, on the back one which guys can do wh what. Basically, all the everyone has access to some of the powers, at least, except for Tyranids, which only have access to theirs. Yay. Who has access to Biomancy? Inquisition, Space Marines, Space Wolves, Blood Angels, Chaos Space Marines, Chaos Demons, Astro Militarum. Darn. Orcs with Biomancy would be hilarious. Biomancy got better. So we'll start with Biomancy. Uh, Biomancy is pretty much the same as before, except they improved Iron Arm. Now Iron Arm is just plus three to strength and toughness. No roll. No D3. Plus three. That's awesome. And they switched around a couple of numbers. Number five is now endurance, and it gives uh, field of pain four plus instead of a five plus. That's pretty awesome. And eternal warrior. Hmm. Oh, oh, sorry, they switched that from iron arm. Uh, iron arm used to give eternal warrior. So now iron arm is just well, the powers and effects like curse plus three to strength and toughness, and he gains a smash special rule. So it won't give him eternal warrior for force weapons, but uh, giving him like. Being toughness 7 is pretty hard to be instant killed. Cool stuff. Divination. Uh, it's basically the same. Prescience. Whoa, Prescience is now Warp Charge 2. That's uh, that's pretty big. And Endurance is now Warp Charge 2. And Hemorrhage is now Warp Charge 2 for Biomancy. Uh, Misfortune is now Warp Charge 2 for Divination. Scryer's Gaze is Warp Charge 2. And besides that, they're basically the same for Divination. Now, the new one is very cool. It's called Demonology. Uh, they study the stuff, things to do with chaos and the warp. By the way, you should check out the warp. You know what I'm talking about. So, number one is uh, the primary power is called Banishment. It's Warp Charge 1. It's a malediction. Targets a single unit with the demon special rule within 24 inches. While the power is in effect, all models in the target unit suffer minus one penalty to their invol save. Normally re reducing it to a 6+. plus. This is cumulative with any other mo modifiers to a demon's invulnerable save, but cannot make it worse than a 6+. plus. Cool. Uh, number one is Gate of Infinity. Gate of Infinity is a blessing that targets the Psyker. Unless the, the target is zooming or swooping, remove the target and his unit from the board. It then immediately arrives anywhere on the board using the rules for Deep Strike. Cool. Hammerhand. Hammerhand. Usual. Oh, actually now it's plus two to strength. While the powers in effect, Psyker and his unit have plus two strength. That's great. Good job, Hammerhand. Next is Sanctuary. Um, you can tell that this is demonology. These are the Great Hunter powers. No, not Great Hunter. Uh, Great Knight. Sanctuary. Sanctuary is a blessing that targets the Psyker. While the powers in effect, the Psyker and all models in his unit receive a plus one bonus. They're involved save. Nice. And if you don't have one, you gain a 6+. plus. addition, all units that demon special rule treat all terrain, including open ground, within 12 inches of the Psyker's dangerous terrain. <laughs> That's nasty. Herd Soul, number 4. Herd Soul is a focus witch fire, 24-inch range. 
Both Psyker and the target model roll a d6 and add their respective leadership values. Target's total is greater than the Psyker's total. Nothing happens if the Psyker's total is greater than the or equal to the target's total. Target model suffers an automatic wound with no armor or cover saves allowed. Bird soul has no effects on vehicles. Number five, Cleansing Flame. Uh, cleansing Flame is a Nova. Wow. It's a Nova power. S Nine inch range. Nova. Strength five, AP four. Assault 2d6. Ignores cover. Soul Blaze. That's so nasty against Orcs and Tyranids. So nasty. Number six, Vortex of Doom. 12 inch range. It's a Witchfire. Strength D. Strength D. AP1. Let me double check. Strength D, AP1. Salt 1 Blast Vortex. Wow. That's nasty. So I guess everyone has access to demonology, except for Tyranids. Because I guess Tyranids are starting in the mood for summoning demons. Uh, that's nasty. Wow. And next there are um, Maleficent. My little Malefic powers. And Grey Knights cannot have Malefic powers. Uh, the primary power is Warp Charge 3, and you'll know why in a second. Warp Charge 3, it's called the Summoning. Summoning is a conjuration with a range of 12 inches, which means you can summon things within 12 inches of you. Creates one of the following units. Your choice. 10 Blood Letters of Corn, 10 Pink Horrors of Tzinch, 10 Plague Bearers of Nurgle, 10 Demon Heads of Slanesh, 5 Flesh Hounds of Corn, 3 Flamers of Tzinch, 3 Nurgling Swarms, Five Seekers of Slanesh rules for these can be found in Codex Demons. So, for three Warp Charge points, you summon demons. That's pretty cool. Number one, Cursed Earth, Warp Charge 1. It's a blessing. Um, targets the Psyker. Well, the power is in effect. All models within with a demon special rule within 12 inches of the Psyker have a plus one bonus. They're involved saves. That's cool. Uh... Dark Flame, Warp Charge 1, Dark Flame, Template, Strength 4, AP5 is a Witchfire, Assault 1, Soul Blaze, Torrent. That's nasty. Number 3 is Infernal Blaze, it's a Beam. 18 inch range, Strength 3, AP4, Assault 1, Armor Bane, Flesh Bane. So it's just going to nasty and destroy everything. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's nasty. Sacrifice is number 4, it's a Conjuration as well. Uh, with a range of six inches, it creates one of the following units. One Herald of Corn, one Herald of Disease, one Herald of Nurgle, one Herald of Slanesh, or up to 30 points worth of options. With what? With up to 30 points of options. So you can create... Wow, that's crazy. If it's successfully manifested, one friendly model in six inches of the Psyker immediately suffers a single wound, with no saves of any kind allowed. Number five is Incursion, also a Conjuration. 12 inch range. Creates one of the following units, three Blood Crushers of Corn, three Screamers of Tzim, three Plague Drones of Nurgle, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. Three Fiends of Slanesh, rules for these confounding Chaos Demons. Possession! Conjuration! This is number six. By the way, Conjuration and Incursion are both Warp Charge 3. Um, possession Warp Charge 3. Possession is a Conjuration with a range of six inches that creates one of the following new units. One Blood Thirster. Lord of Change, Grand and Clean One, Keeper of Secrets. But if the Psyker fails to cast this one, he immediately has Perils to Warp. That's nasty. So nasty. Summoning a Grand and Clean One. Wow. That's a power that needs to be dealt with. Basically, they're trying to sell some, I guess, Chaos... You know, Cast Demons got a hit or something in 40k, so they're like, let's uh, make people buy him. Pyromancy's up next. Pyromancy, um, pretty similar, I believe. Uh, except for two as a flame shield, it's a blessing. There's a four cover save, and all enemy units treat all terrain within six inches is, is dangerous. Cool. Uh, telekinesis. 
I don't remember if these are different. Let me look at these. I have the old, other book. Let me just take one second. Turn to the old ones as well. Okay. I don't remember. I don't really use, to be honest, I don't really use uh, Pyromancy. Is... Nope, it's all the same. Except... Nope, all the same. They rearranged a couple of the numbers. Telekinesis. Pretty much the same thing, too. Uh, Levitation's new. It's a blessing. Target's a Psyker, unless the target is zooming. Uh, Psyker and his unit immediately make a move of 12 inches. Cannot end on top of another unit. Cool. Psychic Maelstrom. So Telekinesis took a change. A few new ones in this one. Psychic Maelstrom, Warp Charge 3. It's a uh, 12 inch range, it's a Witchfire, Strength 10, AP1, Assault 1, Barrage, Large Blast. So a Large Blast, that's Strength 10, EP1, Barrage. I know it's a short range, 12 inches, but still, that is pretty fun and nasty. And then Telepathy, uh, once again, pretty much the same, yep, same thing as before. So that's it. That concludes my, uh, my in-depth review of the new Warhammer 40k 7th edition rulebook. Um, I hope you liked it. I tried to cover everything in good detail. Obviously, I skimmed over things that didn't change because they're the same as 6th edition. So, my final thoughts. Um, as I said, not after reading it through tw three times, I'm just not impressed with the amount of differences. I don't know if it necessarily warrants a new edition. Basically, they took Stronghold Assault, they took Escalation, they took 6th edition, put them together, added this... Psychic phase, which is really just a, a similar to the, 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 obviously it's not identical, but it's very similar to the magic phase of fantasy, which I'm not a big fan of. I like the fact that vehicles got harder to kill. I like the fact that flying hive tyrants are harder to shoot down, but now they can't assault the turn that they go from flying to jump infantry. That's not very cool. Um, I don't know, they changed about four or five special rules. I do like the fact that they, uh, the, the one thing I really do give them credit on is it's really nice, it's really organized, and I really like the fact that they've established order of turns really well. There are precise lists of orders of every part of the game turn, of the player turn, of every phase. And you can follow them, and there's no ambiguation there. I really like that. Because it was really annoying trying to figure out the order of everything. Does it deep strike first, or does it do psychic powers? Or do you choose? You know, and then it was like, oh my goodness. Now it's very clear phases. I like that. I really do also like the fact that they're separating the weapons now. So that's, that removes the ambiguation of the range. You just choose a weapon, fire it now, resolve. Choose the next weapon in the squad, fire it, resolve. And it's just really good. Um, I don't know. I just don't... And I, as I said, I really don't feel that this is going to change the meta at all. It is still very skewed towards the shooting armies, I feel. There's nothing new in here to really help the assaults. Other than the fact that if you have a flying hive tyrant and he gets challenged, he can crush the guy challenging him, and then the wounds then go to the rest of the squad, and that's pretty cool too. I just don't feel as much... Uh, those those glass hammer assault units like Gene Stealers, Harlequins, um, Banshees, you're not going to see any still in this edition for years to come. They're just not strong enough. It is really shooting concentrated because Overwatch is still there. It's still removed from the front and it's just got better for shooting. So I don't know. Not a big fan of that. Uh, I was really hoping that they'd bring it more central again, like fifth edition where, you know, there could be some shooting armies, some assault armies and everyone has fun and a great time. Um, the new format for Unbound is really fun, but silly and it cannot be played in a tournament setting. It would just be crazy. Carnifex, Carnifex, like, just, it would be silly. People would be just, oh my goodness, imagine that. People walk in with a, a whole army of Wraith Knights. Craziness. That's what I say. I don't know. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be great for battle reports. I'm going to film a bunch of battle reports coming up soon. Uh, the new psychic powers are interesting. Summoning demons. I don't have any demon models, so maybe i got to get some now to summon them. And uh, I think the objectives are going to add just another layer, you know, of points. It'll help break a lot of ties. I did notice that if you're playing uh, Warhammer 40k, like Emperor's Will, there's a lot of chances for ties if you have played two shooting armies. But as I said, I think Tau and Elder are going to do very well in this edition. Uh, Tyranids, I don't know how they're going to work. I think they need to FAQ 
what Shadows and the Warp does. Uh, Space Marines are still going to be fine. Space Marines are Space Marines. They'll always be good. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting addition. Uh, I'm really happy about the tanks. That's one of the things I, I do like. Tanks are now much harder to kill because if you wanted to bring tanks, you basically have given up first blood every turn. But now you're okay. So it'll take a little bit more to take down your first blood. But uh, Conjuring Demons is pretty silly. Yeah. That's what I have to say. So, I really hope you enjoyed this um, set of reviews on the rulebook. Expect one uh, probably tomorrow, because I'm getting a little tired. I've been filming for hours. But um, on Dark Millennium and Galaxy at War, I'm probably going to give a quick review on each of them. Obviously, they're not as important as the rulebook itself, which is why I started with it. But I really hope you enjoyed this series of reviews. Uh, please like the video, comment in the comment section down below. And until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting, everyone.